for our next application. It's a marine application. And this one was scanned with long range scanners, or what I call long range, because you could call these medium range, um, because maybe long range would be like from aircraft. You could argue that those are the true long range scanners, the ones that fly over top of and, and scan the, the topology of the ground. Um, but I tend to like call these long range scanners as well. Scanners like this one right here, or this one, um, or this one down here. I've worked extensively with all of these. Um, and these, you know, can be scanners that scan in the ranges of like 10 meter uh, from the center um, all the way up to hundreds of meters now. Some of them. Like some of them are like 80 meters, some of them are 120 meters, um, and then depending on which technology some of these are, whether they're using phase shift or time of flight, some of them like I've heard I think like over 500 meters uh, away from the center as they spin around they scan. So this one was uh, scanned with that type of device, and then most of these companies have added color to them as well which comes into play with this one a little bit too. So I'll go ahead and jump over to this marine example. So this one is a, a historic boat that has tours that it goes on. It's still an active boat that's, I believe, almost 100 years old. And um, people go on excursions with this. Um, so it, as you can imagine with an old boat like this, it requires an awful lot of maintenance to keep it up and running and active. And um, with these longer range scanners, being able to scan that hull and create CAD models and utilize those for the maintenance and upkeep and redesign of the hull to repair it and other factors is awesome. Plus... Another factor that they use this for is they took the color from this specific vessel and they were able to scan the deck um, with color and put it on their website. So this is a screenshot from the website. And on the website, you, you can click on it somewhere on the scan and it will take you down to the location there. And you can rotate around and look at it like you're standing on the deck. Or you can do this. What happened here is you can click a, a flyaway view type thing where you can then look at the outside of the vessel or the inside of the vessel and rotate the entire thing around and look at it. So you're able to use that same scan data to do this where you can archive the existing condition and then do maintenance on the surface of the part. Or you can even utilize this for navigation and using it to sell the uh, experience of traveling on this because I believe this is one that you can you can actually uh, pay for an excursion and go for a week-long ride on this boat here um, so you use that scan data to actually put on the website to show people in 3d the the boat itself so with that I'll go ahead and jump over to Design X and we will take a look at this scan data. So here is the schooner. And if I go ahead and uh, show the scan data, turn off the CAD model and just look at the scan data. Pretty good data, actually. Look at that, it's beautiful. Look at all that. I mean, it's just so neat. You can see the individual boards and the texture and the different differences of each side, right? Um, and just all of the, the stuff that's going on here. Really neat application there. So this is the scan as it is sitting on, um, looks at, sitting on these boards here. Let's go ahead and roll back and take a look at what they did here. So we'll go ahead and roll back to this sketch here. So they went ahead and drew that sketch. 
and extruded it out. So they were able to look at that from the side and create a mesh sketch and draw that as one surface. It's actually quite accurate for a vessel this old. It appears to me like it is. And then we'll go ahead and roll forward. And we'll roll forward a couple more steps there. Let's just see what the uh, mesh is that they created a separate mesh. Oh, okay. It looks like they went ahead and selected some of the scan data um, and copy and pasted that as a new mesh. And now we're going to go ahead and draw some rib lines in multiple directions there. And I'll go ahead and turn those on. So you can see here that we drew some sketches in both directions there. And they created a surface loft here for that top side. And then they did the same thing there. And we'll go ahead and turn that on. So they created um, a bunch of sketches in a surface loft there. And then they did some extends. And then over here, they this is this 3D sketch is what we've seen in the past um, where they drew these multiple sketches as um, tools to split faces. So they went ahead and let's just hide the scan data there. Drew those out to then split them back and then do a surface loft and then sew it in. So you see there, sew it all together. Sewing is almost like merging the surfaces together. And then they went ahead and they mirrored this all across. Trimmy trim. And then let's go ahead and hide that, not that one, right there. So you see this is coming along. Went ahead and now we're going to work on this portion. We're going to work on that center area here, whatever that is called. <laughs> whatever that is called there and then trim that up trimmy trim trim and then it appears to me that they're going to use yeah they're going to go ahead and tackle that with a a big variable a big variable um Fill it there. See that? And we'll just keep going here. And then there was a part that they it didn't look like they liked, so they did a delete face there. We'll see what we'll just kind of roll forward and see what happens here. Okay. So, okay, they're just going to go back and do some trimmy trims um, and make that a prettier. Yeah, that's a beautiful surface there. Yes, yeah, so they went ahead and, and then now they're just cleaning this up a little bit here and there where they're doing some split faces, deleting, and then coming back extending 3d curve delete law fill to create a, a different blend and then sew that in very creative I like it very good
people sometimes don't realize how difficult it is to try to uh, recreate some of this stuff with on the scan data. You know, that's handmade. You know, and capture that in an accurate way. That's manufacturable. You know, and you can capture what's there, but um, sometimes you're trying to make it better than what was there. And we'll go ahead and trim that. So now they're just working on this back section. Working on these ribs here. There you go. Basically just doing offsets, those extrusion ribs because that's simulating putting a board right on top of it. Again, doing offsets, extrusions. We'll just zoom out here because I missed it. And then trimmy, trim, trim. All that in. So we, they did all of this. They did the edge here. Oh, we'll hide that other mesh and turn this mesh on. And we'll turn these off for now. I don't need those. And now we're going to work on this, come back to this back end here and work on the rudder. Trim all that stuff out. We'll turn the mesh off so you can see it. Really neat. And then we're getting there now. Um, so now they went ahead and um, merged that all in to a solid. So now we're we're solidified. Okay, so now we have the solid. And then it looks like they copied the mesh, created some regions, and it did a mesh fit. So let's go forward on that real quick and see what, what they did here. So turn the solid and surf. Oh, I see what's going on. It's down here. So we're reverse engineering this guy now. I'll turn that other surface off. That little impeller. Basically going to part model that in the middle of this whole thing. So we'll turn our solids back on. So there we go. We just created a little blade there. Do the fillets, the pattern, the revolve, the center line. Really neat here. The rest of the transom there. And let's see where this is. Oh, yep, now we're jumped up here. Working on that. Beautiful. And then this last piece is cutting this out and cutting it away, this guy, to create the deck. 
And again, you can go as far as you want. It's really important for for long range to uh, kind of understand the scope of what you're trying to do because you could model this for weeks on end if you wanted to, just weeks and weeks and weeks. So it just depends on what they need to know about this, um, what you model and what you extract from it so you can uh, represent it and create that model. So really neat example using this schooner here 